Hello, and welcome to today's Business Skill Webcast, creating compelling content for the online world. My name is Vesna, I'm from Redback, and I'll be your host for today's session. When it comes to webinars and webcasts, many of us get so caught up in the delivery and technology that we neglect to think about the content. What else can we showcase? How can we get everyone engaged? And how do we improve on our series? Today, we're joined by Sarah Gonzalez and Michael Bunker from Redback. They're here to shed some light on everything online. How are you both today? Good, thank you, Vesna. Very good, thank you. Awesome, so first I'll turn to you, Sarah. So when it comes to creating content for the online world, how are we going? Well, I think um, one thing Michael and I spoke about before we actually got on here is the fact that clearly by what everyone's saying, they know how to run webinars and they know how to get people online, but then when it comes to actually rolling out a series and making sure they're engaging and making sure that they're actually getting some return on investment, we do get a little bit stuck. Yep. So what I want to start with today, just to actually prove that I know <laughs> what I'm saying, um, throughout the registration process, you would have noticed that we asked you all um, what are you hoping to gain from joining today's event and here's what we came up with so we've got um, people wanting to improve how they tell stories yep. um, people wanting to make webinars more than just a Q&A session so it's about that content getting people really engaged and then inspiring them to take action no matter what they do um, one thing I love to hear is when people say um, ensuring others participate in online communities yes. so we're starting already to hear these words online communities nurturing techniques so people are running webinars fine, but we do want to take it that one step further. Yes. That's what we've sort of been seeing, haven't we? It is. And exactly what you said before, like people know what a webinar is yes. and they're more confident with the technology. So the platforms have been around for a few years, they're comfortable with them or they have mm. a provider that is managing that for them so they don't have to stress about that yes. and they can really focus on the presentation and their community and what they're looking to do. And a lot of people are asking, it's like, how can we stand out? Yes. The market is flooded. Yeah, it is, and that's a great thing that webinars are day-to-day -day part of people's marketing content and they're planning and everything, but you do need to learn how to stand out and that's what we're seeing from mm. today. So just further to you, Vesna, I think today is really about going back to step one, yes. going back to basics and talking about the content that we're producing, how we make it effective online, how we get our programs up and running, and then how we can nurture and build communities afterwards. So like we said, we're doing them well, but let's take it to the next level. Yeah, and people yeah. are starting to look at things a little bit differently as well. Like the data that people have before they were concentrating on the live but once you get more and more data what are you doing with it yeah, so yeah we'll tackle that so we can see all the wonderful things that we can do with all of this content all these great objectives but when it actually comes to creating the content how does it all work well, um, first of all, I just want to give an overview as to how we all see content when we're creating. Um, and what we've always said is there's two different types of, mm -hmm. uh, there's two reasons why we actually develop online content, whether it's through a webinar or a webcast. So the first is educational content. So that is your professional development, your online training, getting people to learn online, um, getting someone who's an expert in their field yep. online, educating people, whether it is for compulsory points or whether it is just that online training, yeah. internal or external. And then the second in is that marketing concept. So it's about running an event to generate leads, to be part of your content marketing plan, to be a thought leader, to help you with your branding, or as you can see there, everything from product launches to even onboarding processes. So yes. people know all these different reasons and these different applications why they should be creating content. But let's just switch it on its head and let's just say this. At the end of the day, it's all about <laughs> education. Yes. So yeah. I don't care if people are running events and their end goal is to convert someone, make them become a customer. We have to start thinking of that as a long-term goal and the short-term goal is to really just educate people online. So whether your return on investment is going to be a dollar figure yes. at the end of the day, whether it's going to get to convert people into non-paying advocates or members to get them to actually pay and be part of something. It's all about that educational factor and making sure you educate people through a process. Don't just run one event and then expect people to convert and become a customer or a member or something like that afterwards. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing people, they'll jump into webinars because they need to do webinars, but they don't give themselves a true shot at it because mm -hmm. you can't measure yeah. the return on investment from one event. Yeah. Yes. And a lot of people get disheartened by that at the beginning of it, thinking that, okay, I'm going to invest all this time in this one yeah. live event, but that's not going to build your community. You haven't proven yourself by doing just one event. You need to show that you're committed to it, you're advertising or you're marketing to the same people each time and also trying to get new people in each one. It's the only way if you can start building your audience and community will you actually get a true measure of your success. Yeah, most definitely. And Sarah, you mentioned having a process in place. And I know that there is a three-step key process to mm. creating online content. Can you just talk us through that and what that involves as well? 
Yeah, so um, with the whole educational concept in your mind, um, keep that as we go through um, this three-step process. So the first part of it is creating. Um, so whatever it is, you just got to do your thing. So maybe your piece of content or what you generally produce as an organisation is something that's regular, maybe it's not so regular, maybe it is white papers, maybe it's blogs, let's talk about that. Yep. Then we'll go into the sharing factor, so how to actually get that word out and share that content and what are the best ways to market your online events. And then we go into that community step where it really is about nurturing your audience and then creating that path to succeed um, and also building communities, like we said. So if we look at create, I think the first thing we need to do is ask our audience is, what do you already have? Yep. You know, yeah. time and time again, we see so many people go into these events and the way they market, for example, you might be um, in marketing and you don't have any social media presence at all. You run a webinar and you think, oh, well, I need to start a social media page. Don't do that. Start backwards and think what you already have. And don't go out there and really in reinvent the wheel. So Just wrote that down. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you've got existing content. So maybe you have your blogs. Maybe you have your white papers. Yep. Maybe you have any sort of FAQs. And if we look at this list here, this is just an... I'm sure people have so many more things yep. that they can talk about. Um, but, you know, you might write a blog every single week. Mm -hmm. You might have 20-page white papers on something. How can you actually create that content and curate it and then bring it into the online world? Um, one of the things we spoke about the other day was FAQs. Yes. So well, Exactly that. Like, FAQs is a big thing. Like, what are you most frequently asked? Mm, yeah. As like, So say you're a personal trainer and you have your own business and everything and you write all these blogs, weekly blogs or monthly blogs, but all of your clients are asking you about nutrition. Mm. Why wouldn't you do a webinar on nutrition? Yeah. Because you're creating a piece of content that can be repurposed afterwards. Mm. So where a webinar fits in that's slightly different to a written document is that you can create the one digital event, you can do it live, but then you can repurpose it. That mm. can be coming or FAQ afterwards. You can break it up into blogs afterwards as well. There's much more of a strategy around the digital event that mm. allows you to create multiple things. And I think a lot of the time, and you know, it's fair to go out there and ask your audience what they want exactly. and they want to learn about. Mm. But look internally as well. So, for example, we've got um, a customers facing support team mm -hmm. and they're on the front line. These are the people who are speaking yeah. to our customers. 24 hours a day in some cases. And then you've also got a sales team who is speaking to people. They're uncovering their needs and wants. So it's about looking internally at different departments and saying, well, what are you finding customers from the support side need? Yep. What do you think from a sales perspective, people really, where are their pain points? And then as marketers, how can we create content yep. online and written and bring it all together to create these amazing programs <laughs> that bring so yeah. many people online and make you look fabulous at the end of the day? Um, everything from even upcoming events, you know, think about other stuff that you have going on and if you have a conference at the end of every year how can you work backwards and then use webinars as a platform to showcase or market those events with key speakers or stuff exactly. like that and yeah exactly that you're bringing an international speaker in mm. from say the states three weeks before the actual conference why not do a webinar with them that's kind of a teaser event leading up to the conference a lot of people nowadays are only committing to physical events closer to the day so that becomes a lead generating mm. exercise for you as well you have a unique opportunity with these things to break down the four walls of a physical room exactly what we're doing now we don't have the audience with us. You guys are all in your own place. Mm. But you can reach such a wide scale number of people that you need to be really smart about where you're playing and where you're dabbling. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and we've done this before, Vesna. You know, we've gotten and we've written down every single piece of content that we <laughs> actually have. And I encourage everyone out there, if you've got a piece of paper, write down um, your content um, or think about your content marketing plan and yeah. what you've currently got going on. And then sort of start to mind map how this sort of stuff can be taken online. And that's where you come to this next step, which is... Breaking it down. Breaking it down. So more than just a dance move. Um, <laughs> it depends who you yes. ask. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely not my dance move. Um, can we just talk about breaking it down? So what does that involve? What's what's that all about? So breaking it down really is about creating easily digestible information. Yes. So yes. what you have on a 20-page white paper may not be appropriate for the online part of it. Don't so, and, if, and I know it does sound, oh, well, duh, of course, when you're creating a PowerPoint presentation, it's the same, but it is actually different because there are so many different other components that you do have to take into account. So think of it this way, like I said, and I keep going back to the white paper because I think that's one of the most commonly used pieces of content. You've got a white paper, it may have six different sections in it and it might be 20 pages long. What can you break down and break into segments? And then how will you format that? So yep. when you're in the online world, it isn't just about having content that's transferable. Yep. It's about interactive tools such mm -hmm. as polling, yes. resource folders where you can actually redirect people to actually go and have a look and segue. If you guys take a look in that resource folder, you'll find a webinar organizer handbook. Yes. Um, feel free to take a look. 
but thinking about how you can take it to the next level because if sometimes one piece of content doesn't really take well if you have one person sitting in front of a camera and just speaking to the camera <laughs> the entire yes. time about something that is, um, and I'm not bagging out anyone, but you know, tax related or finance, something a little bit more dry, maybe you do need to mix it up a bit and show your personality. And that goes back to the branding side of things where you actually have an opportunity to show your brand and show your personality through these different events that you run. Um, we also talk about the style that you're running as yep. well. So today we're in interview format. Yep. So Something a little bit different, two different perspectives on things, even though we tend to agree with a lot. a lot of things. <laughs> um, try and think of something that we can disagree on. Um, and then, you know, your presenter. And I think, um, you know, the whole presenter thing is huge, especially when it comes to the passion stuff. It really things. is. And I think everyone, like, you can have the best content in the world, but if you have a really boring presenter, I'm sorry, no one's going to yes. listen. No. And it's the pr same person who's actually, like, really engaging in a yeah. physical event might not be. And that's okay. You need to play to people's strengths. Yeah. So you do need to go out and find out, look, even do a practice one with your presenters. See how they're going to actually react mm -hmm. with a digital audience. Because if yeah. they're not going to be the, if they're not going to work out, don't waste your time in it. Because yeah. you've really only got one chance to impress on a digital event, especially in a submerged and the marketplace so flooded with them. You really need to have a great presenter who's passionate, enthusiastic, who's going to draw people in. Because at the same time, some of you people might be looking at your emails right now and just listening to us. We want you watching the screen, so we're going to be a bit more animated. Mm -hmm. We really want to keep people's attention, and you really only got one chance to do that. Mm, definitely, yeah. and I think one of the main things that I always tell presenters is to act really casual. Yeah. Because if you're speaking really formally, no one's going to pay attention to that. You know, you have a really serious face. You just have to be relaxed. You know, you're talking to someone like they're right in front of you. So you don't want to think of this in a really physical event. You can sort of be a little bit more formal because people are there in front of you. They can mm. feel you. Yeah. But then on screen, you just really have to project your mm. personality and just yeah. really be there. And this comes also down to like the best practice and tips and everything that we were talking about with what our audiences actually want to learn yeah. about. You don't have to just do a PowerPoint presentation and speakers. You can mix it up. You can do a panel of speakers without any slide content and have their different perspectives. MHPN does this amazingly where they have a written white paper and then they have five different people talk about their experience on how they ingested that white paper. And the one thing, like, I love our whole talking about content marketing with like, the white paper coming first, doesn't need to be that way. You can actually do a webinar first, and then from that webinar, create your written content. Mm. So you can actually, you can flip it up on its head. In the old days, it always was, Web, white paper first, then webinar. It now can be a one hour webinar, but then you could break that down into five pieces mm. of 50 or four minutes, four or 15 minute sections. And then that can be installments mm. of white papers afterwards. Mm. So really just be smart about how you can leverage the content that you're creating. Yeah, and I think that brings us to another point, Michael, that is about the um, blended content yes. thing. So if you're just going to do written content, you are actually restricting yourself mm -hmm. with your audience. But then on the other side, if you're just doing online content, then you can also fall into that trap yeah, as well. Definitely. So you need to play. Um, Spaces. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, and you want to also engage, people engage in different channels, so people learn differently. So you've got people who learn visually, mm -hmm. people who pre prefer to read, or maybe just want to listen to a podcast. So yeah. um, one of the things that we started doing recently and I think works really, really well for those different audiences is we run a webinar, and as presenters or as people running the webinar, you know, what are the key takeaways from that? Yes. What are, you know, like I said, think about those easily digestible segments. And some people just want to hear four dot points. They don't want to listen to to someone talk. So after a 45 minute webinar, think about the five key takeaways, blog about that, and then direct people to a recording of that webinar. So yep. then you're attracting people who may only be subscribed to your blog not necessarily your webinars, you're then marketing your webinars to that audience as well. Yeah. Yep. Then you've got the social media stuff. And just on this last point here, when we talk about editing, yes. you know, if yes. we are doing an event like this, it is 45 minutes long. A lot of people don't have the time or the brain power sometimes, <laughs> depending on what day it is, to actually sit there for 45 minutes. Yep. So. You know, think about when you're creating your event, what am I going to do with this in three months or six months time and how am I going to attract a uh, varied um, audience? Yeah. So we have broken this up into eight segments, but if I really want to put pressure on Vesna, yes. I could have said, okay, this is going to be edited into eight different videos afterwards. So when Vesna's asking her questions, how can you ask questions that will then appeal to the on-demand audience? So yeah. for example, every single eight, one, every single video that people watch, just imagine that it's their first time watching that video. Yes. Um, and I'll send some links out afterwards in the um, recording that we send out within 48 hours. And that will actually include an example of how that's been done with another other event that we've run. And if, it, if you do it properly, it does take a little bit more work and quite an experienced presenter. If you do that properly, then it can actually be amazing because then you've got 
eight different pieces of content yeah. to send out in eight different formats yep. over eight different times. Um, so if anyone's got any questions about breaking down that content, um, we can talk about it for the next 20 minutes yes. or so while we have to <laughs> yes. on. Uh, feel free to ask us in the question tab. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. So uh, we'll move on now to the why component. Mm -hmm. So we talked about passion and we talked about webinars and it's all really great when, you know, you've got a really great idea, but why should people listen to you? And that came up in a webcast we did a couple of weeks ago. So Sarah, can you please elaborate on why, what that means? Why should people come in and yeah. what that's all about? I think, um, so a few weeks ago we did um, creating um, presentations just in general, but also for the online world. Um, and this was getting people to take action. And we'll join by Lee Featherby, who's this amazing um, PowerPoint presenter guru mm -hmm. who has actually built a business around it and one of the things that he talks about is really um, about defining the why so why are people there and if you don't know the why then people won't know the what yes. when yeah. it comes down to it. So it's the first thing I think is asking yourself, what can you offer people online? What sort of value can you offer? And then understand that it's about people feeling something. Yes. So this really goes back to the beginning when we spoke about, you know, you can have as much content as you like, you can break it down and you've got this amazing piece with this great presenter. But people just need to press a button to log off yes. at the end of yeah. the day. So that's when as an organisation, your branding and your personality, your format, their interactive tools, yes. all need yes. to play a part in it. And eventually, you need to be the type of thought leader that is, you know, people are joining my events, they know what to expect, they know they're going to have a bit of fun, they know yep. they can ask questions, and try and keep it consistent and then give people that consistency in what you're delivering as yep. well and understanding that why. So it's about purpose, yep. knowing why you're there. So um, at the beginning, you know, we who would we be if we didn't practice what we preach? <laughs> um, you know, making sure at the beginning, we didn't start off with, oh, my name's Sarah and I've done this, this and this and Redback does this and Michael does this. It's not about us. Yeah. It's actually um, about the purpose and why people are join, enjoying. Yeah. So establishing that credibility at the beginning yeah. and saying, okay, everyone, here's where we are. We're going to get straight into it. We know why you've joined. Yeah. Here's a list of reasons why people said they wanted, wanted to join in this event and then we're going to talk to that yeah Otherwise, there's no point in getting on there and just going on off on a massive tangent. And he actually calls this um, capability versus credibility. Yes. So um, credibility isn't necessarily getting online and talking about how credible credible you are and how many letters are after your name on your business card. It's actually about getting on and showing that you understand the audience that you're talking to. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And I think the other thing is there's actually I see as two whys when it comes to running a digital event yeah. or online event. Mm. You have the why that's going to be getting your audience, and that's the purpose. And that's it used to always be well we need to the why is I just need to run a webinar and that's mm. different yeah. it's no longer the case there's a lot more strategy behind your live to your hosting and how you're producing content um, and now with educational it's like you need to have clear call to action so you have the why and that's why they're joining it but then why is a marketer why is an organization why are you running these events mm. so for me uh, for working with a lot of customers it's like okay we do CPD pro uh, programs and that's great we get a large audience it's like okay well how are you targeting non-members it's yeah. like well maybe do a free webinar on an educational content and then have clear call to actions to point people to your paid content. Mm. And I think, don't get lost in defining the why of you're getting your audience, because that's one, that's definitely the biggest mm. part of it. But then as an organizer, why are you running this event? Is it to get convert leads? Is it to monetize content? All mm. those things. You need to have those two whys aligned together to make sure they're both pointing to a common area. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think at the end of the day, it is like we just said, your audience. But if you're not also playing to your goals and you're just yes. doing it for the fun of it, yeah. <laughs> then they're really, you're going to spend a lot of money possibly and you're just going to alienate people at the end of the day. But um, one other thing that I really like in this bit when we talk about defining the why is about creating that discussion with people. Yes. So, yeah. um, And when I say discussion, it's not about people typing into the chat box. You know, that's great. You're creating that engagement. Mm -hmm. But it's about what happens afterwards. So it's about understanding those key takeaways. And I always say every time I hop on an event or when I present an event, I ask myself, you know, what are the three key takeaways that I want people to take away? Or yep. what are the three things that I want to learn when I join this event? Yep. And then sometimes I just even go back to why I registered and see if they align, yep. even just to see how other people people are running their events and if you go out there and you start registering for these webinars mm. and you start looking at what other people are doing you'll actually see some people get it really really great yes. and some people get it really really wrong and that will allow you to fine-tune and see okay what this what's this person doing wrong how yeah. can I make that better how does this yeah. all work um, and when we talk about discussion it's about you know 
around the water, water cooler. cooler yeah. You know, what are people <laughs> yeah. saying afterwards? Yeah. It's like, you know, the next day, oh, you know, I attended this great event and this happened. And some of this stuff isn't really measurable. I no. think a lot of it is just that gut feel kind of thing. And some things I think if we start measuring everything, we'll just go crazy. Um, but there has to be, you know, there are tangibles that we can actually yeah. measure. But don't get too caught up in it. Think about, and you'll get off a webinar or you'll finish um, with your presenter and you'll know automatically what the gut feel was from yeah. the audience. Yeah, if they're going to be good or bad. It's honestly, look, I find it really easy. It's like, what were your light bulb moments? Mm. What did your audience just go, oh, what are the light bulb moments? If you can clearly see what yeah. each one of those was, write those ones down. Those will be your key takeaways from it. And it might be similar or exactly the same to what yes. you did, but it might also be different. And that's not a bad thing, because you could say, uncovered today, yeah. X, and actually play to that. Yes. So. Yeah, most definitely. And just one more thing, we talked about credibility a lot, and I think it's really important for your presenter to actually talk about issues which are going to be, uh, which the customers will be dealing with, to actually talk about what they've done, how they've helped their customers, and things that customers can relate to, and then that really just sort of brings it back. And mm. Yeah, yeah really I think great. like it's case studies and stuff like that just tie everything together yeah. and really make the customer feel, or the person online, oh, wait a minute, okay, that builds credibility, yeah. as opposed yeah. to... You're talking about yourself. Definitely. Yes. And I think stories, they just really kind of bring it all out and people can really apply it. Yeah. Awesome. So we'll move on now to marketing. Oh, <laughs> just before that, yeah. I just <laughs> want to say something. Um, and we've also spoken about this before. Um, and when we talk about creation, um, one question also you need to ask yourself, and I know you're asking yourself a lot of questions, but trust me, it's <laughs> worth it. How can I engage with alternative content? Yes. So I think we go into this a lot and we think about, like I said, how to educate people mm -hmm. on what I sell or the yeah. product that I'm giving people or the service that I'm going to create for people. However, sometimes it's about, like I said, understand your audience and what they're dealing with. So for example, there's a lot of issues that happen in society that um, either we avoid mm -hmm. and we stay away from, or we can actually be that thought leader and be someone who's actually helping people through them. Yes. So, and I know it is a little bit fluffy for some people, but I think it's it definitely so does valuable. work. Yeah. And it, yeah, it is valuable as an organization to show that you care. And yeah. I think it's hard to show that you care through a lot of marketing yes. activities, especially when it comes to, you know, breaking through technology and stuff, and people do see it as quite salesy if they have had a bad experience. Yeah. But we talk about content, it's not just about, you know, the ABCs of how to have a nutrition yeah. plan. You know, what are people in your, um, what's your target audience dealing with? So for example, if you're in the motor trade industry, for example, yep. and your main target audience might be, um, the demographic might be men over the age of 45, we know that in that area that, you know, mental health and people yes. actually talking about depression might be an issue that these people aren't really familiar with or know how to talk about. Why not get a mental health expert in and talk about something a little bit more nurturing to people yeah. as opposed to just a product or something that yeah. you're trying to help people with? Really tap into people's conscious and really understand what they're dealing with, how you can help them, and be more than just someone putting on webinars for the sake of it. Try and actually create some good from it. Well, exactly. It. Like, I love when I see customers do this because nine times out of ten or 99% of the time, companies are 100% transactional. Mm. They take and they take and they take. Mm. And you find that if a company is just seen as that, if you go out there and you put on a free educational webinar or webcast that tackles a personal issue, you're going to hit a much larger audience. You're going to hit people that never joined your digital events before because you've actually hit something on a personal note mm. for them. But then that goes back to the, exactly what I talked about before with the why as an organization are you running these. Those are massive lead generation opportunities to showcase your platform and your presenters and everything. And then you can have call to actions on that page of, oh, do you have your CPD points coming up for your series? Mm -hmm. Click here to see our upcoming events. You have a, a, that whole strategy around doing events for the sake of doing digital events is one thing, but if you're really smart and you have a clear takeaways and actions of, I'm going to grow my audience by doing free events that hits a personal note, you'll succeed. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of organizations out there and they do have um, a social responsibility. It is a yes. lot, it's an element yeah. to what they do as well. So start thinking about charities that yep. maybe you already support and how you can bring those in. So um, we've dealt with organizations before and they've said, okay, we're going to, we already work with these three charities. We charge for our webinars. This charity might have something special going on that month or a certain campaign. 10% yep. of everyone who joins a webinar, that will actually go to that charity. Get someone on from the charity to speak and to be in, in you know, to introduce or something. Facilitator there's, for the day. Yeah, there's so many different things that you can do just to tie yourself to some really good initiatives out there. And like Michael said, give back 
sometimes. Yes. And, you know, yeah, to start using these online events for different different ways, I think, just to really, um, I just think it's got a really good feel to it and I don't really think it's utilised enough and I think if we can get people using these sorts of platforms for this type of thing, I think it I think it will definitely take off. Yeah, if you're wanting to stand out and be seen as something different, do something different. Mm, definitely. If your competitors aren't doing it, be the first ones to do it. And I think that all really just goes back to really treating your webinars as a part of the marketing mix. So it's not just selling, it's not just, it's actually the whole mm. thing, you know, you're going to be marketing about your charity work, your social responsibility, so really just treat your webinars as a part of that. And um, yeah, and speaking about marketing, uh, we'll just move on to <laughs> Sorry, that now I as well. No, no, that was great. <laughs> it is really important to talk about other yeah. issues. Um, so with marketing, a lot of companies that I've worked with really tend to go wrong here. So what happens? What do you mainly see? Yeah, well, this is the second piece of the puzzle, um, mm -hmm. and this is around sharing. Um, so this is really about what channels can I leverage, yes. and this is what you need to ask yourself. Um, and in the follow-up, um, or if you download the webinar organizer handbook from the actual um, resources folder. tab, you'll get a little sneak peek in there about passive marketing and direct marketing and it goes into a lot more than what we're going to today. Yeah. So just as an overview, like we said earlier, if you are going out there and you're starting to market your events and you're using channels that you're not used to, it really isn't going to work. Yeah. And I think with marketing, it's not just a real push marketing that we need to do. We need to start thinking of it as pull marketing as well mm -hmm. and understanding that when you're creating an event, that's going to lead to this bit of content and that piece of content, then it all comes around and then every, eventually every piece of content that you produce online will start marketing itself yeah. because what people don't realise is at the end of an event, you can market your events. Once the event's over and you send out emails, once the event's yep. over and you've got an exit survey feedback, it all starts to play into each other. So first of all, um, just as an overview with passive marketing, so one month before, you've got your page up, you're taking registrations, but I think a lot of people fall into the trap of um, pushing marketing on people so early yes. in the piece. And you know, we Too always early. say um, when it comes to marketing, I'll just bring this up, dedicated marketing, where it is that push, it's that dedicated email invitation asking people to act now, creating that urgency should be done no more than ten, seven to 10 days before. Yeah. Now, if you are running CPD programs or something and you are charging and it is part of the bigger picture, that might be a little bit different. But in general, when it does come to content and you think about your whole content marketing plan and how much stuff you've got going out to people. Yeah. And you know, if you're sending this stuff out one month before, you're not creating that urgency for people. No. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, that's a month away. I'll do with it when it gets there or something like that. Yeah. Whereas if you're creating that urgency online now, you know, make sure you register yeah. because there's only limited spaces or something. But what you can do with the passive marketing beforehand is you've got that up on your website. You might have, you know, just basic social media and not really paid on there. And then you've also got a webinar series where you're passively promoting that. You might have, just say for example, this event is on creating compelling content. Yeah. We might have done a white paper two weeks ago on creating compelling content. We might have done a blog mm -hmm. one week ago and within that we're actually asking people to register. So Definitely. that's the passive side and yeah. I think that needs to be thought about a month before, possibly even earlier, depending on your strategy and your audience. But when it does come to that dedicated marketing, those sponsored ads on your yes. Facebook and your LinkedIn, your last chance to register email, obviously really, really stick to um, right there, right now, creating the urgency yeah. and getting people to register. And I think it's really important as well, if you can, to get your presenter involved in all of that as well, because yes. they will have their own following, their own yes. social media channels. So if they can blog about it on their LinkedIn, on their websites and promote it as well, that really kind of creates that cross promotion. Yeah. And that really just helps out as well a lot. Any kind of marketing really boosts it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a physical event at the end of the day. And a lot of people are so used to advertising and marketing for physical events and having yeah. a really extended lead time. For it, you do need to realize that this is only good. Yeah. I'm not going to commit to a digital event two weeks out just because I don't know what I'm doing in two weeks. Mm -hmm. My meetings always change. It's generally only the day before when I get that last yeah. chance to register or my reminder email the day before that I see I got a blank bit of my calendar. That's when I register. And I think about 80% of our customers see the largest influx of people coming in is the day before mm -hmm. of yeah. the event. I'd be surprised if it's not because most of the ones that I talk to, they, like, they'll have a great steady line of people registering leading up to the event, but the highest influx of people is the day before. Mm. And definitely use words like last chance to register, don't yeah. miss out. Tomorrow. It's very basic marketing, yeah. but it just, it really does it the does. job. Yeah. 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 So beautiful. So we'll move on now. Um, so after the webinar. So what happens after the webinar is <laughs> just as important as the webinar itself. So we talked about getting feedback and getting all of those things. But when you actually get all those documents and put it together, what do those numbers mean and what can we do with that? 
Yeah, I think um, one thing that we've seen, and it was predicted and everyone thought, oh yeah, it's just online, you know, it's not yeah. going to take off that much, is the fact that mobile and social and digital has really changed everything. Yes. Um, it's great for consumers and people out there digesting content and your audiences because it means they're getting the best of everything and they are being nurtured. Um, but when we talk about nurturing, it's about what happens after your attendees leave. And I think a lot of the time, and we've all done it, we have an event, we have it online, it's amazing we close it down and then what do we do afterwards we might put it up on YouTube we're not actually tracking anything but then we've got those people there and like I said at the beginning if we go all the way back to creating that content and knowing your goal and understanding the why why are people there if you are running lead generation you're very very rarely going to convert every single person yes. or even 20% yeah. of those people on your event to buy them yes what you actually need to think about is what is the long-term goal and how can you drive people along that path so just to put it in perspective, 2,900, so that's the amount of marketing messages that we're exposed to every single day. Wow. That's how many people are actually that's buying for our attention. So think about that when you are creating these um, invitations that are going out to people, you are promoting your event, but then also you're getting people online. If you're not educating them and you're just pushing content on them and you're just talking about how great your product is, how great the presenter is, buy now, buy now, yeah. and that's your call to action, it's not going to really work that well, no. trust me. There needs to be a lot of investment in terms of what you're doing. And like we said earlier, you need to show people that you care and you need to sort of empower people on the other end. Yeah. You want to steer the direction. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It's about you working with them. 80%. Um, so... 80% of people now are on a self-directed customer journey. So what that means is that there's so many places to go and get information now. And we all know it. If I don't understand the meaning of something and I hear it in a conversation, I'm going to Google it. Or if I'm talking to someone about some sort of, you know, um, you know, new piece of content or something like that or some new technique that's used in marketing, I'm going to go Google it or I'm going to look for some sort of information yeah. on it. Yeah. However, it's on the customer and it's on us to actually go do that ourselves. So people are also interacting with you before you even realise, yeah. and that's 80% of people. 87% of people demand something meaningful and something that really has that brand experience. Yeah. And I, yeah. So we should at the end of the day. So of course. Once Why again, are we here? If you're, if you're online and you aren't showing thought leadership and you're just going through the motions and you're just talking to people and down to people mm -hmm. on these online events, what do you think is going to happen to people yeah. online? So in order to combat this and what we actually uh, what we actually um, provide advice on is actually creating advocates online. So think of it this way, you've got someone who registers for your event and then you've got people who attend yep. and then you've got people who no-show. Pretty simple, right? Now, if we take the next step, you've actually then got the people who attend, how you deal with them after the yep. event should be completely different to how you deal with those people who actually were no-shows at yeah. the event. Now, this is all going to depend on the sort of marketing <coughs> platforms you're using, how sophisticated they are, but you can do those first five steps very, very easily yeah. by just setting up two different lists within the event and those who attend and those who don't attend. So if someone does attend my event, I'm going to send them a recording afterwards and I might have a bit more of a powerful call to action to them. If someone doesn't attend, I'm not going to send them the same email which does have that call to action. <coughs> they weren't on the event, they weren't live, they didn't experience what everyone else experienced and they're not really engaged. So I might have a different piece of content and instead of sending them the PowerPoint slides, I might send them a white paper that's one page and it has five key takeaways and then yeah. I'm going to forward that to them so they can actually feel like they were part of it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> From then on, we actually have their behaviour. So you can leave it there and that's good enough. That's still probably 20% more of what most people do when they actually send, or probably even 80% more yeah. now I think of it. Um, from then on, how you actually engage with people with your content, whether it's your online events or whether it is just your normal content, their behaviour would dictate what actually goes to them. And that's where it does get a little bit more complex and it does take over your entire marketing strategy, to be honest, but it does work and it is effective. So like I said, um, this is really, really basic nurturing, but if you have someone registering for your event, don't expect to convert them at the end of your event. Think about the path that you can take them on and the journey. So then eventually you can sort of yep. just, you know, it's like a whole, you know, you go on a date with someone and you expect them to propose <laughs> on the first yeah. night. It's really not going to happen. So how can you wind them and dine them and make them feel like they're part of the bigger picture before you actually, and it, depending on your organisation and your goals and your audience, it can take two weeks or it can take two years and it's all part of the buying cycle. Mm. And under, as soon as you acknowledge that it's in the customer's hand, 
clients and it's their engagement and their behaviour that's driving what you do, I think that's when you're going to succeed with your webinars. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think getting the customer feedback and also finding out what topics they care yes. about, what they want, that really sort of builds that relationship and it says that you are listening to them. Michael, is that something that you find as well in webinars? Oh, yeah. It takes, it, it can take a long time. It can yeah. be a short buying week of a week yeah. or even on the same day. We've had customers call up who have just been like, we need to do one tomorrow. We've got a speaker in. It's like, okay, yeah. yep, we can make that happen. Other ones, though, have been watching the Business Skills webinar series for the last three years and they've just been educating themselves for three years. They might never do anything, but they still come back and they repeat because yeah. they're wanting to be educated but then we have other ones that after a year I think have come back to us saying we've been watching you for a year we now are ready yeah to do digital events and that's been great and it's really building that relationship and don't underestimate the power of someone who does watch for three years because maybe they'll pass that content on to someone exactly. else you know let's say you know they'll have a friend who wants to do webinars or wants to do something and they'll really pass that content on yeah. so I think really yeah that's important because if you go into this just with a goal to make money or to um, really, really see the, the bigger picture and expect it to happen straight away, it's not going to happen. No. You need to go into this and think of yourself and, you know, what's what's the purpose? Why are you creating this content? What do you want to achieve out of it? And I think for most people it should be about thought leadership mm -hmm. and be seen as those someone who's delivering something different and actually helping people. And, you know, the end goal, of course, is that, but let's not get too greedy and let's not, you know, focus on that. Let's think about how we can build our communities, yeah. nurture those people to take action, but in the meantime have some fun and produce some awesome content. Exactly. Definitely. <laughs> okay, so we're going to move to our Q&A shortly. Yes. So just to wrap up things, we talked a lot about key messages. Yes. So um, if we could just sort of uh, conclude on everything, what are some key messages that our audience today can take away? Um, the gist of it, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, the, the, we just want, and I yeah. think, you know, just think about at the end, you know, what's, what do we want What do we yeah. want to percolate in people's heads? And this is pretty much This it. is pretty it. And it's, yeah, making sure you have a clear why. Why are you doing this and why are they attending? Make sure those two are aligned. Mm. That's one of my favorite things. But yeah, what can you offer your audience? And also get them to get feedback. As soon as you go to your community or to your audience, then you say, look, we're wanting to do this. Give us your input already. They're invested mm. in it. Yeah. So they're already going to be the ones that are like, oh, they actually listened to me. This is a topic I recommend. I'm going to enjoy yes. Like, you want to get them involved from the very beginning. Yes. Definitely. And as we mentioned before as well, getting your sales team, the frontline staff, everyone just really involved in yes. that process because they know what people are asking about. They know what people care about. Mm. So yeah. that's, yeah. And don't be scared and have fun because it is yes. a lot of fun. <laughs> mm. yeah. And, um, yeah, at the end of the day, you know, it is about thought leadership and it is about going out there and delivering value, but you still need to have your long-term call to action yes. in mind. But I think the biggest thing for me is to really just think about um, your goals as an organisation, as an individual, what you want to achieve, and don't just think about a webinar as a standalone piece of content. No. And, need, and it is content, and it does actually have to be part of your overall marketing plan, because if you're going out there and you've got a webinar delivery person within your organisation delivering webinars, they're not in sync with marketing, they don't know mm. how it's going to happen, and it's just completely standalone, which I think traditionally is how it's been done. Yep. I don't really think that's going to work. Yeah. I think it is time to reevaluate and to start being smarter, and like we said, think about you know taking it to the next level and I think the fact that people are online today it really shows that they do want to take that to the next level and make it a success. No definitely you sort of have to align everything and make it work. No Great. beautiful. Okay so we'll move on to questions. Uh, so if anyone else does have questions please feel free to send them through in the chat and our first question today is from Sandy. So it is, I've had a lot of success getting solopreneurs, micro businesses to attend my webinars, but not so much success in getting buy on from my target or corporate market. Any tips on how to get them to commit to attending webinars? Hmm. I think question. it's um, <laughs> attending or registering. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. So yeah. I think um, if you are getting those people to register, then obviously you're getting the word out. I think one of the things um, people need to start doing is looking at their conversion rates. So you might go out there and you might be having, you know, 400 people actually viewing your registration page and you might only have maybe 20 people register. Yeah. Yeah. Where's that gap? What's happening there? Yeah. And then with the attendee part of it, so if you are, um, Sandy, if you are running free events, then it, you have to understand that the average attendance rate on a free event on a webinar will be around 40%. Yeah. If you are charging for events, then it is going to be a little bit higher. But what we need to start thinking about, like I said, is what happens after the event and that on-demand part of it. So Definitely. how can you then engage people afterwards with that content? Are you sending it to them afterwards? Are you then um, using your recording emails? Because I think a lot of people, they hold everything so close to their chest <laughs> and they're like, well, if you, didn't, if you didn't attend my webinar, I'm not going to send you the content afterwards. Which is 
is a big mistake because your largest portion of your audience will actually watch yes. the on-demand nowadays. Yes. Yeah. So you need Definitely. to have two different strategies for that. And if you are Sandy, getting them to at least get to the registration page, that's half the battle. Make sure you shorten your registration fields. Yes. That's one of the biggest tips out there is people make it way too long. Yeah. You've only got, and also your email marketing, people have a glance rate of three seconds on an invitation to see if they want to actually click through. Mm -hmm. So you need to make sure that clear call to actions, getting them onto the registration yeah. page, don't have too many fields that's going to then stop someone from registering. You can always get more information from getting them to download something during the webinar, asking them for to input more information later on. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's all about you have to do that A-B testing. So, you know, try one thing with one landing page and then a different thing with another one and take that feedback on Subject board. lines. Subject lines are very, very important. And, yeah. You know, make it colorful, make it stand out. It is about marketing. So you can have a little bit of fun with it as well. But then on the same on the token, topic. same token, though, some of our customers have found that if they have really flashy invitations, they actually don't get through. And they've yeah. stripped them back to just text versions for corporates because mm. it, people don't like seeing they download this image. If it's just a purely text-based email for a corporation, that actually might be better for your audience. So do a little bit A-B testing with your emails going out and see which one's going to work better for you. Definitely. And I think also, Sandy, you asked about attending. You should always remember to send reminders to attend and really show the value of attending the webinar and to sort of and say that it is going to be a live Q&A session, you know, that attending live, there's going to be some value in that rather mm -hmm. than attending on demand. And then that'll sort of really get them There's a sneaky well. trick that uh, a couple of people are doing now, which I quite like, and that's you offer something in the live event that you don't give in the on-demand. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't have to be something tangible like a uh, downloadable co piece of content or 10% off. Some people are doing, you attend my webinar, and the first, five, first three minutes will cover seven points for success on blah. Mm -hmm. So what they do is everyone joins, it's like, okay, thank you, it's 10 o'clock now. Our seven tips for three minutes are, they do the tips first for everyone who's joined, and then they go, okay, we're going to start the recording now. Welcome everyone to today's webinar. Uh, that that's then sneaky. not, <laughs> yeah, that's then not part of the recording. So only yeah. the people that started at the correct time will get that piece of information, and it's never kept for prosperity purposes. So it's a really interesting way of trying to get your audience Yeah, I, I think it's interesting, but, but I'm not I, a big, I don't yeah. agree. <laughs> I just feel like I said, what is your goal? Is it to have people listening live? Because yeah. you're forcing people to join them yeah. Yeah. and who's to say they're going to be as engaged or my whole perception would be yeah. this person is making me watch at this time yeah. to do yeah. this like I've got other stuff to do <laughs> I'm happy yes. to watch it and be more engaged in my own time but yeah. the fact that I'm almost going to resent you for making me watch at this yeah, it time a little bit angry, to get my like. value yeah so I think it depends on um what sort of person you are, maybe. Yeah, who you're targeting. Like, you know, don't punish your audience. It's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all about creating the relationship. Yes. And it won't be a very nice relationship. Did we finally disagree about something? <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> there we go. See, so we're taking our own. <laughs> Only took 42 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> no, and um, also just for the audience as well, if you could complete the survey that is on your screen now so we can get our feedback, that would be really appreciated. And if you do have any more questions, please do send them through. So um, I, we haven't got any more questions coming oh, through at the moment. And... Yeah, great. <laughs> Thank you very much. And um, yeah, so just make sure to have a look in the resources folder as well for all of the things that we mentioned. Thank you so much, Sarah and Michael. Do you have any last thoughts as well on the topic today? I would say, like, look, we have covered a lot of information today, and so feel free to give us a call. Both Sarah and I are here to answer any of your questions. The recording will be going out, but if you do want to have a chat to someone about more strategy around different things or about webinar series, we love having those chats, so reach out. Excellent. And, yeah, just for me, thank you for joining. Um, it's always great to actually discuss stuff like this. Yes. Um, you do it every single day, but to actually <laughs> sit there and help other people do it as well, it's quite rewarding. So, like I said, if you have any questions, let us know. Head over to webinars.com.au. Hopefully that will also provide some insight. Um, and like I said, any questions, let us know. We're here to help. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Sarah and Michael. And thank you so much to the audience for those questions and for filling out the survey. It was lovely for you to join us today. And we hope to see you at some future Business Skills Webinar events. Thank you. Bye.